Women in Art. Sophonisba Anguissola. One early but extremely important woman in art was the Italian artist Sophonisba Anguissola. She was born in 1532 during the era of the Italian Renaissance. Her father, the nobleman Amilcare Anguissola, was a follower of one of the leading thinkers of the period, Baldassare Castiglione. In his book Il Cortegiano, Castiglione encouraged members of the nobility to study classicism and the fine arts. Inspired by Il Cortegiano, Amilcare Anguissola had all of his children extremely well educated in these areas, and Sofonispa's artistic talent in particular blossomed. She would even be mentored by Michelangelo himself. Eventually, she would go on to become court painter to the Spanish King Philip II, creating many paintings of his family and forming a close friendship with his wife, Elizabeth of Valois. She enjoyed an illustrious career in a time when women artists were rare and was praised by many important figures, including the artist Anthony Van Dyke and the writer Giorgio Vasari. Let's take a look at what made Sofonispa Anguissola's painting so memorable and special. The first painting by Anguissola we will look at is the painting Family Portrait, Minerva, Amilcare, and Asdrubale Anguissola, which was created in 1557. In this image, the artist creates a tender image of three members of her beloved family. Even though this image was painted early in her career, it is clear from looking at it that she had the skills that were necessary to be a successful artist. She renders details such as clothing with great precision. For example, when we look at the cloth Minerva holds in her hand, it falls exactly the same way that real cloth does. The fur on the dog next to Azrubale is also extremely detailed. Furthermore, the background contributes to the realism as Anguissola depicts columns behind her father, increasingly distanced architecture, and a mountain in the distance. In this way, the artist creates a sense of perspective. As well as incorporating these magnificent details, Anguissola also creates a strong sense of harmony amongst the members of her family she depicts. Her father, Amilcare, puts an arm around her younger brother, Asdrubale, while her sister, Minerva, lovingly looks on. Viewers can definitely sense the love and trust between the children and their father. Asdrubale, in particular, looks at his father eagerly, as if asking for his approval, which Amilcare seems to grant. This work is currently in possession of the Nivegard Museum in Niva, Denmark. Family portrait Minerva, Amilcare, and Asdrubale Anguissola would sadly never be fully completed, as Anguissola would start working at the court of Philip II in Spain before she could add the final touches. It was during her time there that she created this portrait of the French princess Elizabeth of Valois, who was Philip II's wife. As well as sitting for portraits by Anguissola, Elizabeth would also take art lessons from the Italian painter. This portrait, called Portrait of Elizabeth of Valois holding a portrait of Philip II, was completed in the early 1560s, at a time when the queen would have been in her late teens. In spite of this fact, Anguissola gives her a regal air beyond her years. Indeed, Elizabeth is depicted as tall and slim, with a polite, dignified smile on her face. Anguissola contributes to these qualities by illustrating the queen wearing a ruby-encrusted gown with pearls and gold on the belt and collar. Anguissola's gift for realistic detail comes into play once more here, as the fabric, lace, and sleeves on the gown are almost of photographic quality in their realism. Perhaps most importantly of all, Elizabeth holds a small cameo bearing a depiction of the king. Elizabeth of Valois commissioned many cameos depicting Philip II, so depicting her holding one in her hand here seems to serve as visual documentation of her devotion to him. She rests her hand holding the cameo against an imposing column, alluding to Philip II's illustrious Habsburg ancestry. This imagery may also serve as further visual and symbolic representation of Elizabeth's belief in the strength of her husband. Evidently, Anguissola understood the power of visual language in communicating the identities of her sitters. This painting is currently at the Museo del Prado in Madrid, Spain. Anguissola's thorough understanding of the power of visual language in communicating identity can be seen in her self-portrait of 1610. 
unlike her portrait of Elizabeth of Valois, which goes to great length to depict its subject as queenly and beautiful, Anguissola does not shy away from illustrating her old age here. Her hair is clearly thinning and her skin is wrinkled. Even so, her large, bright eyes and the book she holds in her left hand inform us that her intelligence is still strong. Furthermore, her dark dress and lace collar, clothing items that she wore in self-portraits throughout her life, reinforce the idea that she is still the same artist in spite of her aging. Sadly, Anguissola would lose her eyesight as she got older, eventually having to quit painting altogether. This self-portrait, however, serves as a powerful reminder that her commitment to art never faltered, in spite of the physical challenges she faced in her later years. This painting is currently housed at the Gottfried Keller Foundation in Winterthur, Switzerland. Sofa Nisva Anguissola lived a highly unusual life for a woman of the late Renaissance. Women rarely became artists during this period, as evidenced by the fact that none of the other Anguissola daughters went on to have a career as an artist. It was even more rare for a woman to serve as a court painter to a figure as powerful as Philip II. Her example was noticed by many, however, and would give her a place of distinction in the European art scene.